Hey guys, it's Evan and today we're working on a uh, John Deere 2025R. Customer brought it in, said that it was it was having issues hard starting in, in cold weather, so uh, we're gonna dive in and see what's going on. I've already really gone through the diagnostics on this, but I can just give you a quick rundown of what I did and then uh, we'll just put it back together and verify that we have fixed the problem. I'm gonna replicate the issue that it came in. Customer is saying hard starting. So initially when I got it into the shop, of course customer, they had it on their trailer already and it was already running and warm. So I just parked it in the shop, left it overnight, went to start it up the next day and it cranks, 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 cranks. Fire in the hole. It is puffing out smoke, but it takes it quite a while to, for the engine to actually kick and for it to fire up. Right away is like, that could be a few things. Since it's cranking and we're getting smoke coming out of the tailpipe, we know there's fuel getting into the cylinders. We don't know the quality of that or um, how well the injectors are actually atomizing that fuel as it's going in. So that could be a potential problem with the injectors or fuel system, but See, and knowing that there's, there's smoke while it's cranking, we're getting fuel, so we'll just put that aside. And then we're looking at things like compression and glow plugs, especially when it's cold out, are the glow plugs working? Because uh, these little Yanmars, they definitely need them to, to start up because they don't, they don't really like the cold weather. So the first thing I did is I checked for 12 volts to these glow plugs. Um, I already have them out here and we'll show you where they go and how they go in. So you go right on the top there because this is the power wire coming in. They ground to the cylinder head uh, just through the housing of the glow plug so there is no, no ground wire off of these. You just put your multimeter right on top, find a good ground, turn the key on, the glow plug uh, circuit comes on for you know a few seconds, 10 seconds, whatever it is, and you should have 12 volts and I did. So, so we know that we had good power to these. Knowing that, I went ahead and I just pulled the glow plugs out and then I actually, I, I just left them all hooked up to the wire here and I just ran a ground off of the each plug to the engine and then turned the key on to see if these were getting hot and they weren't. Anybody wants to have get electrocuted? Okay, so this is a quick and easy way to test if glow plugs working or not is uh, you see we have the ground clamp on the body of the plug there. I have a spare 12 volt battery kicking around, so I went ahead and uh, hooked my jumper cables up to that. And you're just gonna touch the, the top here, the threaded part on your positive. And then if you watch the plug, it will start to, see that, it's glowing red. Which is good, that means that plug's working, that's perfect. So that's a fairly quick way to test. I had already done that test with the old one here, but I'll do it again just to show you guys. So that should be getting red or getting hot or something. If you want, you can go ahead and just put your tongue on there and that'll tell you in a big hurry if it's hot or not. That is how you test just using uh, 12 volts. Okay, kitty. Another test you can do is actually also ohm them. Now there's, there's no spec for these in the manual. So what I do in a case like that, uh, since we have three is we just compare them all and see what the resistances are. Set your meter up on your ohm setting. My meter is kind of measuring 0.8 ohms just on its own through these cables. It is old. It's okay, I kind of know I've been using it for a long time. One of your probes, put it on the just the top threaded end where the power goes into the glow plug, the other one on the body. Let's check and see what we have for resistance. We're getting 165 kilo ohms. So that is extremely high and I would just call that open circuit. So this is one of the new ones. Again, ground to the body, another probe on the threaded part. So we're measuring about one and a half ohms on a new plug. So then it's safe to say that that old one is garbage. 12 volts is the easiest test. As soon as it gets red hot, well, it's working. So all of them had really high ohms. I would call it um, out of limit, which means open circuit. You got three and you're like, well, they all kind of own the same. So, and what are the odds they all fail at once? Well, 
usually not good. I don't know the, the quality of these particular plugs. The odds of them all failing at once, who knows? Maybe they just all failed over time and uh, now none of them work. But there's, there's only 1,200 hours on this tractor, which isn't a lot. So I am a little surprised that they, all the glow plugs have failed. So anyways, once I suspected that it was the plugs, popped a new one out of the box and I ohmed that one to see what my ohms were. And my ohm readings were very different. I was like, okay, perfect. Glow plugs aren't actually working. Good to know. We're gonna go ahead and put in the new plugs and then see how this thing starts. So on this particular engine, the glow plug holes are actually hidden in behind here, behind the injector, and you have to pull the whole valve cover off to get them out. So I've already done that. This is just sitting on there loosely. So we're just gonna pull that off. On this engine, it's kind of kind of unique. A lot of little engines, I guess, the intake manifold is built right into the valve cover. So when you pull the valve cover, you pull the intake manifold. It is that way on a little, or on a, quite a few compacts. These ones actually came out surprisingly easy. Usually I actually kind of dread having to take these out because normally they're all seized in there and you end up snapping them off and having to weld and cut and drill and oh my word, cat. When you're replacing these glow plugs, go ahead and put a little bit of never seize on these because if you ever got to pull them back out again, it's nice when they actually come out. Sometimes the expansion and contraction of just like the dissimilar metals, the head to the glow plug, sometimes it can cause them to just to get really tight or, or else there's corrosion. You get a bunch of crap that just slowly goes in around uh, the plug and, and the head and rusts it in there. You know, there's just all kinds of stuff. Like I've pretty much worked on everything like, you know, construction, forestry, mining and agriculture. and. Tractors are probably one of the easiest things to work on. Look how close I am to the engine right now. I, I can just stand right beside it, start taking parts off of the engine, whatever I have to do. This is a quite a small unit, so they're not all as easy as this one. But uh, if you're on like an excavator, usually you're on your stomach, leaning in a hole, trying to pull whatever off. And this is a little bit more enjoyable, I, I find. Just do the old uh, hand torque there. People will be like, what are you torquing that to? Ah, a little more than snug, less than braking force. Torquing it to journeyman level. Make sure you root the wiring around the right way. All right, so we've got uh, all the wiring hooked up to our glow plugs here. We've tightened all the nuts. So we're going to go ahead now, plug the glow plugs back in. All you apprentices watching, you got to learn how to do this one handed. I know I'm kind of cheating right now. I'm using two. Again, that's something else that's on the test. You got to be able to connect and disconnect an electrical connector with one hand. If you can't do that, forget it. You might as well go home now, find a new trade. And now we're going to put the the valve cover back on, the valve cover intake manifold. Just make sure your gasket's all clean. They went ahead and made one bolt longer than the rest. It's kind of irritating. It's enough that it makes a difference which hole you put it in, but it's not enough that you really notice it when you take them out. Unless you're really paying attention, but who does that? When you work at the speed of lightning, you ain't got time to see those details. This is getting risky. So risky. Oh, now my finger's stuck. Ba boom. <laughs> boom, torqued. And now, for the finale, we put on the air cleaner. It's like ram air. See, when you're driving one of these tractors and you need a little extra horsepower, you, what you do is you just open up the hood and then the wind channels into here, into the air cleaner, and it's ram air. Because this little guy is just naturally aspirated, so we ain't got no turbo. That's how we get the extra ponies.
Okay, um, I did also notice on here that it was leaking coolant at the top rad hose. So we're just gonna tighten that up here first. All this goo around the top rad hose, that's uh, a good indication that it's been leaking there. And that is just dried coolant and dirt and debris and it kind of makes a mess like that. So we're gonna go ahead and just tighten this up as it was fairly loose. Typically, coolant leaks like to show up in the winter time or when the engine's cold because all your metal and hoses and everything, they all kind of contract and hoses get stiffer. If anything's a little bit loose, then that's when they start leaking is when it's cold. Do you want some juice? It's Kool-Aid. I'm just gonna give it here, no funnel. This is all those years of experience. Check that out. Oh yeah, this is happening, that's right. Believe it. Notice my approach, how I put the bottle sideways. I'm not holding it by the handle or in a vertical position. That's how you get the most optimum pour angle. All you apprentices better be taking note because they test you on this. Oh, see that? That is an expert pour right there. How do I know that I didn't overfill it? Because when I put the cap on, I didn't have any coolant ooze out around the neck. See, expert fill. You will never ever see another fill like that again. Again, same approach, bottle sideways. You wanna see a nice, smooth pour go, oh, and stop it just like that before you get too much. This top line, this is the full hot line. This is the full cold line. I've actually put it right in the middle. Some people would be like, dude, you put in too much. Well, guess what? There's what you call an overflow. It's right here. So if there is too much in there, guess what? She's just gonna spit it out on the ground. Don't tell the environmentalists. So when you first key the ignition on, we're gonna see the glow plug light there. And you don't wanna crank it until that light goes out. Just let those. Boom! See that? Boom, fix the problem. You hear that baby flash right up like that? That's the way you want it. So, glow plugs, they gotta work. Like a dream, like a dream. This client is gonna be over the moon. I fixed his little tractor. Woo. It's a habit from up north actually, cause in like minus 20, the ink does not like to get onto the paper, so you just breathe on it. By the way, guys, we're working in my shop out here in Agassi. We could probably do a shop tour too. I mean, I mean, it's kind of a, a mess. I don't, yeah, when it's done. Nobody wants to see a messy shop. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do a shop tour when this is done, if that ever happens. What have I had in here? I've had multiple skid steers, um, some mini excavators, tractors, I should be able to fit like a 350. A 350 should fit in here. 350 size excavator, that's like a 35 ton. I, it'll fit at least a 200, a 200 easily, but a th it should fit a 350. Like a dream, like a dream. This client is gonna be over the moon.